Hi folks, Nick Shaheen recapping the week ending uh, 7.17. A, an interesting end of the week in the sense that price action was pretty confusing. We had some uh, mega movers uh, that actually skewed the markets up, uh, at least for the NASDAQ, and it outperformed uh, all the other indices. In fact, most of the day the indices were in the red except for the NASDAQ, and if you backed out a couple of stocks from the NASDAQ, it too would have been red. Let me show you what I mean. This is a heat map for all the indices, uh, S&P 500, 100, NASDAQ, Dow, and the Russell partial. And uh, you can see that you can count the boxes of green and they're all the same. Google and Facebook were massive. Google, a huge up move on Google, uh, something we've never seen before. Best day ever, over 16%, and for a massive stock, up 16%, it would account for a good portion of the move. And in sympathy, Facebook moved up almost 5%. Um, I think it's misplaced faith because the move was consensus that Google moved on the fact that they have a new CFO who had uh, who started to look at profitability and rein in expenses. Google has always been um, blamed for spending on this and that and the moon and everything else. So she came out and said, I'm reining in the expenses. So the run in Google is not contagious. Um, there's no new CFO for Facebook that is reining in expenses today. So 5% up move on Facebook is overkill. Maybe it's shorts running for cover. I'm not sure what to make of it. There were huge boxes that moved also, like uh, Amazon was up big, Tesla was up big. Uh, Tesla may have had uh, some news from Elon speaking. So big boxes that moved the markets and skewed the results. Uh, the results today were uh, you know, mixed at best. Uh, you know, The S&P barely green, the Dow a little red. Uh, the, the small caps were really red all day and then they turned around for a uh, closing strong on Friday to end a, and wait for it, a positive week for the indices. And let's switch it up here. Uh, best of which was the NASDAQ. You can see the Qs right here. Huge candle on decent volume, uh, but huge candle and breaking out of this you know, box it's been uh, in. The S&P is still in that box. But there's a caveat to that, and I'll show you later. And the small caps is also two weeks in a row green, but uh, still not out of the box, but also still threatening to recent, close to recent highs, let's put it that way. Volume across the board was a little less than last week. Um, you know, it's, it would have been great had it been huge volume. So let me dial into the indices and see why. First, let's look at the winner. That's the NASDAQ, the Qs. I like to look at that. Uh, you can see today's volume, uh, Friday's volume was pretty good. Um, and it's on it. Look, look at these candles. Uh, these are, uh, again, a V recovery from, th this is October recovery. This is now. In October, it got to recent highs and then broke out even further. And then since then, it's been ping-ponging this white line. And here it is almost at this white line. What next, right? So it broke out in force. Um, how many times they're going to move Google 20%? I'm not sure. But this move in Google is fundamental. So let's dissect the Google effect. I think the contagion is misplaced because it was specific to Google fundamentals, just like Netflix. Netflix did also a huge move this week. Um, so let's see what Facebook does when it reports, etc. Apple is up next. So if you're shorting the NASDAQ, you better make room for another huge up in Apple in case it happens, because Apple is like 15% of the NASDAQ, in my opinion. So a 10% move in Apple would move the NASDAQ like 1.5% points all by itself. So be careful shorting the NASDAQ if you expect Apple to deliver huge earnings, and most importantly, to be well received. All right, Long traders, you can't say bye, bye, bye everything because these are specific stories about specific companies. So you have to pick winners, ride winners, like Google fundamentally based run, ride it. Netflix fundamentally based run, global expansion, ride it. Facebook, you know, you, you really can't mess up a billion users, ride it. 
but you, you just can't buy everything just because it's up. Uh, Tesla story, it seems like to be loved and when people want to run it, but so much has to go wrong, uh, right for Tesla for it to grow into the, uh, uh, so it's not a slam dunk like the other ones. So uh, what are the ranges? This is one we showed you, the, uh, the small caps. Whoops, I always do that. I type it in the wrong window. The small caps um, had a meander uh, four days. Uh, if I zoom in, you'll see that uh, they had four candles in, and they were like erasing each other. So big up, big down, somewhat big up, indecisive, big down, um, and it's tightening. So uh, this is indecision, in my opinion. They don't know whether to do this or to do that, and just go in size with these. So. Well, careful with your next move. Next week, if markets go up, the NASDAQ, I mean, the small caps, although not directly influenced by any of these major stocks, it may be contagious to them and say, you know what, well, let's just run and try to revisit the new all-time high, the previous all-time high. Or, you know, markets malaise and meander down. So one thing I haven't said yet, Greece. That's because also on Friday, Thursday, Friday, we had the elimination of the Grexit looming this weekend because everybody's now on board with the same program. Now, mind you, the details need to be worked out. The thing is not dead, but the Grexit immediate Grexit scenario is dead, and now they just have to work on uh, details. And there are some payments due. You can look them up, but they seem to be one of kicking the can down the line. So this is the range on the small caps. What about uh, SPY? Um, uh, volume was less than yesterday. The SEY, two candles. This candle was red all day, by the way. So two candles now uh, butting up against this one. Why is it important? This was prior support for a long time, like two years plus. We broke through it a couple of times, especially in August. I mean, October last year. Uh, now we come at it from the bottom. What they need to do is it also coincides with new highs. So they need to break out of this orange thing just like the NASDAQ did and put this behind them. Otherwise, they risk, they bulls, risk at reestablishing this as future resistance, prior support turning to future resistance. Still up in the air. Next week, Apple will break the tie, in my opinion, or has a chance to break the tie. All right, so this is what uh, the picture looked like uh, at the end of the week. This is what the picture will look like next week. We're set up as far as uh, open interest to be about the same with a bullish flare, meaning the Qs, which we've mentioned earlier, look bullish, so be careful shorting them, um, and use them as a basis for upside. Uh, debit call spreads should pay. Also some winners, uh, maybe some carry through in uh, Google and uh, Apple, or probably a lottery ticket for calls. I have one, I've cashed it in several times. Um, and as far as particular names, there are other names that could go up there. Uh, AXP has uh, maybe a potential uh, decision to be made, you know, up uh, three or four dollars or down three or four dollars. Flip a coin, see whatever fundamentals you subscribe you believe and take that. Costco has some positive, uh, possibly, it has a level to break, and if it does break through on the up, upside, it might have some uh, room to run. Um, maybe also um, uh, ticker RAD, we can look at that, actually, why don't I do that? I'll show you where that potential lies. If we break through nine, maybe 10 is next. I mentioned Costco. This green line could be the trigger. Uh, if they break through 145.6 or something like that, uh, maybe 150.55 could be next. Um, that's easy, uh, not too bad of a challenge for a quality company, well-loved company like Costco. Uh, this is American Express. For that guy, we need to zoom out to say two years to see it. Uh, this is the line I'm talking about. I think it's either gonna be here or here. Pick and choose. If I were to choose right now, I'd pick here. Fundamentals is up to you, lost Costco, blah, 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 but you know, it's not a terrible company. All right, so these are, this is the big picture. Room for upside with potential downside risk if Apple disappoints, but the downside scenario seems to be limited without new headlines. What could be the headlines? You know them, China, uh-oh, um, <laughs> Greece, uh-oh, and of course, we've got the lack of conviction so far with the bulls this year. But I think if they can clear the 21, 30, 40 uh, in SPX, they have room to run. Um, and Apple could be the tiebreaker. Nick Shaheen signing out. If you have any questions, please let me know.